Hello and welcome back to News of the Week at BPS. Thanks for joining us on this, the most busy of weeks in the run-up to the festive season, where manufacturers are desperate, it seems, to push all their new toys straight out the door to us. And we begin this week with Sony. And their first little offering, if you will, is the A7 IV. What a lovely little package this is. Um, it's meant to be feature stripped and basic, but there's nothing really basic about it. It has a 4K image from an oversampled 7K sensor. It has S-Cinetone. It has S-Log3. It has 10-bit internal. It has all the nice codecs that we need and good AF. So it hasn't got the slow-mo, maybe, of the A7S Mark III, but for a lot of other things, I think it will do the job. And it's available for two grand X VAT. And let us also not forget their new Zoom, the 70 to 200, lighter, faster, and quicker AF. The final nail in the coffin, if you will, of those people who don't believe AF can be used for professional productions. Now, moving on, we have Samyang, long been known for affordable glass. And here is an interesting lens, a new video optimized zoom that is supposed to be parfocal, which is very exciting. Parfocal, of course, meaning that you can zoom in and out and your focus should stay fixed. It shouldn't wobble off. This is a 24 to 70 f2.8 FE lens. So it will work on obviously Sony's mirrorless full frame cameras. It's got 82 millimeter front filter and it's got a minimum focusing distance of 1.15 feet. There you go. How's that for detail? And then we have DJI with the innovative, exciting and unexpected Ronin 4D. Words are sometimes not really enough to explain what this is. Uh, it's a mishmash, um, the love child, if you will, of cinema and gimbal uh, with wireless thrown in. But there is a lot to unpack here. It's not just a, ca a camera with a gimbal. It's all built in. And then you've got that wireless control. And then you've got the LiDAR radar focus. It's the operating system, though, that I found particularly exciting. I cannot believe they've designed that touchscreen and that operating system for just this camera, because it looks very, very smart, very well developed, very intuitive. And the fact you can see a waveform with your focus points on, and you have that interaction between manual and AF using the radar, um, this is next level innovation. It, does it look like a chicken? Yes, it does. But let's get beyond that, because it has enormous potential to speed up all sorts of production and if we can work out the lenses that we can put on the front, I'm really pleased to see you can put e-mount on the front as well as as well as their lenses, then this could be quite exciting. I think the challenge will be to find the right lenses to fit on the front to make the most of it. But what an exciting product. I can't wait to give it a go. And then we have Miller with their Art X um, cinematic fluid heads. Now, the Art X heads appear to be a more affordable, lightweight range of heads. Now, Miller, I like Miller. They are built to last. They really are decent heads, but they tend to be quite heavy and they can be reasonably pricey. These look like a more affordable option and they come in three sizes. And not forgetting Aperture, they are releasing um, two sets of new lights. We have the small square Amaran sort of COB 60X and 60D lights, which are obviously the dual color and then the daylight. They're little boxes of lighting joy with a spigot point underneath. You can power them by MPF or you can adapt to a DTAP or obviously you can use mains. These are the kind of lighting nuggets of joy that fit in a very small bag and allow you to turn up traveling and light things very quickly with very little. Next, we have the P60X and P60C panels, which I believe one of them is actually, I think, the most RGB WW budget friendly LED I've ever seen. Um, these are good because they're small, they're light. You can power them again with MPF, so you don't need big batteries. They've got a tiny power draw and they'll give you a very quick instant key anywhere you need to be very, very fast indeed. And they also come with their range of affordable adapters. I like the fact they've already designed a slip-on softbox so you can soften the source straight away. I can't wait to have a play with these. You've got all the usual effects as well built in, but price-wise, they're really pushing down on the price. And finally, with no disgrace, we have Sigma with their 18 to 50 
f2.8 contemporary zoom. What I like about this zoom is it's absolutely tiny. I know it's only for Super 35, but it's 2.8 all the way through and it weighs less than a thimble of salt. So it's tiny, tiny, tiny. Mirrorless cameras, gimbals, um, it's e-mount. It could go on that strange chicken camera that DJI have just announced. It could go anywhere. The main thing is its size for what it can do. And that stop, I think it's a very interesting piece of glass. So there we have it, the news of the week, compressed as quickly as I can because I like to waffle, but I hope that gives you an idea of the smorgasbord of delights that are coming our way.